Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, today we're going to talk about setting up code blocks. Uh, to get started with my C++ tutorials, I thought that we should start from the very beginning, because some people haven't yet got a uh, IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, uh, set up yet. And code blocks is a really good one. I've, I've used it for a long time. Uh, I think it's superior to most of the other ones out there. And it's free, so it's pretty simple to use, uh, and you ain't going to pay much money for it. So... Here we are at their their website. You go to www.codeblocks.org right here, or you can Google it and it'll be the first one that comes up. Now, first off, we're going to hit downloads. Now, here's where a lot of people get stuck. Right here, you're going to see that there's a download the binary releases, download nightly builds, download the source code, retrieve source code from SVN. Now, a lot of people get confused and don't know exactly what they want. Well, these down here below these two are to download source code so the actual stuff to make code blocks so we're not really developing code blocks we're just wanting to use it so we're going to download one of these two <clears throat> now the difference between these are a nightly build is there it means that every night that they're supposed to make a build of their project and it's the newest top of the line um, leading edge version of code blocks it could have some bugs in it but a lot of times it's got some cool features but for ease of use, you want to you're going to want to download the binary release. The binary release is just the cut and dry, simplest way. It comes with an installer. Everything's easy to do. So we're going to click download the binary release. Now here's where a lot of people get stuck. Is right off the bat for Windows users, um, you're going to see that there's four different downloads. So the first two, Code Blocks Setup and Code Blocks Setup User. Then we have code blocks ming w setup and code blocks ming w setup user. Now a lot of people end up clicking these top two, and that I mean it just looks natural to click those. However, these two do not come with a compiler, which is what you need to actually make your code into a program. So without that, you pretty much end up with something useless, and unless you know how to set up a compiler, which you know we're going to go over setting it up the simple way. So right here, you're going to skip these two. Now the difference between these two, these two bottom ones, is that one is for uh, people who don't have administrator rights. This one right here, and this one's for normal users. Now if you don't have administrator rights, you can download this one, so set up underscore user, and it will allow you to install to a folder that you have write privileges to. So pretty much basically any My Documents folder would work. And you will be able to run it from there. Now, if you have normal administrator privileges, it's your own home computer or whatnot, this will be your best bet. So that's the one that I downloaded and started using, um, and you're going to come up to this screen. There's going to be a pop-up that comes up that says a bunch of compilers. It's already got the top one selected. Uh, it'll say detected. So you just click that one, set, hit set as default, and hit OK. Once you do that, this is going to be the screen you're left at. So we're going to create our first project. And go over hello world which is what every pretty much every programmer I've ever seen has started on a hello world uh, program simply put hello world on the console so to do that we're first going to create a new project right here's where you're going to create a new project click that it's going to bring up this new from template now the easiest way to get to this is clicking console application we're going to click it and hit go you're going to come up to this next screen. Hit Next. We're going to want to make sure it's selected as C++ as we're going to be programming in C++. Project title. Let's call it uh, CPP Training. What that's going to do is it's going to create us a project. Right here you can see the project name, a uh, project file name is cpptraining.cbp, which is Code Blocks Project. That's your project file. It's going to store pretty much all the information about how you want to build a project and where all of the source files are. And you can set where you want it to store, what folder right here by clicking this dialog and it will bring up another dialog to show you the standard Windows dialog like this. And you can go around and click where you want, to, want it to store. We're going to hit next after you have that set up. Now this is just making sure your compiler is set to GNU GCC compiler. Then you also want to make sure that these are checked. And what this is going to do is it's, it's your build your builds. Um, simply put, you're going to have a debug build and a release build. 
Um, for now, we're just worried about the debug build. We'll just leave it as it is and hit finish. Now that generated your project for you from the template. Now you'll be able to go over to CPP training, go to sources, and hit the plus sign. You'll notice there's a main.cpp file. C++ files are named CPP at the end. And main is going to be your going to contain your main function, which is your starting point of all program. And there you go. This is a Hello World program that already built it for you. We'll go over what all these different pieces mean. So right here at the top is your include statement. It's a preprocessor pre directive. It includes the iostream header file. And what a header file is, it's a collect, uh, collection of, um, of function declarations that go to a library. And this is from the standard library. And iostream gives you the ability to do input-output streams. And for us, we're going to be streaming an output stream to the console. So that's why we want to use it. Now using namespace standard, um, we'll get more into namespaces and whatnot later on in the further tutorials. But just know that if you didn't put this using namespace standard before you put a command, that, uh, that a function that comes from iostream, you'd have to use std colon colon and then type the thing like c out. But because we use namespace standard, you get to omit the std colon colon before all command calls that come from iostream. This kind of makes the code look cleaner and simpler for tutorial purposes. Now down here is the our first function. Now a function is like if you if, if any of y'all have ever used basic or QBasic, you know about subprograms and subs. Um, they were like little tiny programs within a program. That's pretty much the same idea. These functions have a set reason to exist. They they usually take some type of input and let out some type of output based on what the algorithm is that's contained inside of it. In this in this case, it main is our this right here is where our program's going to start. This is the starting page. So to make a function you need right here is your return value. This is your function name and this is your parameters. For your basic main call you just need to make it like this and put two curly brackets like this an open bracket and a closed curly bracket most people that's uh, if you hold shift and hit the two buttons next to your P that's usually those right there right beside the standard angle brackets now our first line here of code you'll notice this call C out that comes from the standard library now what that literally means is C out, console out. So output to the console. We're going to use the stream. We're going to stream into, using these stream, into the C out. So that's going to actually send that to the console. And what we're going to send is hello world. Now when you do a string like this, you put double quotes and type what you want inside of it. And when you do that, that will be put onto the console. Now we're streaming in another another object. Every time you, you want something extra, like another command or something like that, or another variable to come in, which we'll talk about variables later, um, you've got to do another stream. So end L. That's another call from the IO stream. And what that is is it's end line. So when you when you call this, it's going to print hello world on the screen and then end that line make a you know go down one a carriage return then always remember at the end of a code line that's right here we're gonna have a semicolon semicolon just tells the compiler hey this line's done this is the command we want to run now we're gonna go right here and this is your return statement now return is what we're going to return remember I said this was the, re the return type well we're returning this through that type and we'll go into that later uh, exactly how that works with functions and whatnot. Uh, right now, just know that in a ma in a main in the main function where your program starts, if you call a return, it's going to end the program. That's that's the end of it. And just make sure you put the semicolon at the end. Make sure that you put that curly close bracket there. Now all this is done. We got a program here. So now we could actually build it. We want to we want to make it run, right? So we have to actually build it. What it's going to do is compile it. And then it's going to link it. Now compiling is taking this this uh, 
programming language that we can read and turning it into, into code that the computer can understand. So when we compile it, it's got to be linked, and linking it is bringing in that library, IO stream, with all those extra functions that we needed, like C out and indel, so we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. They have already done it for us, so we just use those. Uh, it brings those in and attaches it to our program. So to do all this, it's real simple for us. We simply hit build, and then click on build. And when you click this, you're going to notice down here immediately, we see some work going on. Now, mostly all you're worried about is that we end up with zero errors, zero warnings. So by telling us that we have zero errors and zero warnings, we don't have any problems. It built, built fine. It completed successfully. Now, let's say if for some reason I, you know, only put one bracket here. We try to build it. You notice, notice how we have faults now. We have some errors. And what it's going to say is right here, you're going to see where it is in function int main, which is this int main. We have an error, invalid operands of type. So we have, we have something wrong. So if you click on it, it'll tell you where it's at. And you can quickly, once you get used to it, you'll see that these are like this, and this one's not like that. So let's fix that. Now we go up to build, and we hit build. And it builds successfully this time. So now we want to see our program in action. We just simply go up to run right here, click it, and that runs it. Hello world. And it says process return zero, just like the return statement says. And you got your execution time for debugging. And it says press any key to continue. When you hit a key, it closes. You're going to go down here and it's going to tell you the statuses and stuff like that from the uh, down here in this uh, console. So if you want to if you want to change it up and uh, maybe put something in uh, some kind of message in here for someone, you can just delete the stuff that's inside of the, the quotations. And you can type what you want. You could say hello, someone's name. And there you go. And now we can just build it. Remember, when you make a change to any of this code, you have to go to build and build it again. And you'll notice it'll rebuild it. And then you simply hit play. And hello, Tim. There you go. It all works. Well, that's about all we're going to go over today on this. This has got you with a code block set up. And you've been able to see what a, a simple program looks like. You've, you've actually created your first executable. Um, it'll actually run on Windows PCs and stuff like that so uh, pretty good little jump next we'll go into uh, more advanced stuff get into like functions and learn how to make some functions and um, if statements and whatnot so uh, I'll see you on the next one take it easy